In a secret lab, a bunch of alive people are frozen by a doctor. The plan is to keep them in this state for a week and calculate if they age. Unfortunately, during the procedure, the device malfunctions and the people are left to freeze for an indefinite time. Twenty years later, two of them finally regain consciousness, but they are unaware that the outside world has changed completely. Following this, we are taken to the year 1999, and introduced to the protagonist Go Mirren, a beautiful and lively young girl. She is trying to find a decent job to support her family, which consists of her parents and her differently abled younger brother, Namte. One morning, Mirren gets a phone call, informing her that she has been rejected from the job interview she recently attended. Sad, she sits to have breakfast with her family, when suddenly, the phone rings again. Mirren gets a surprise invitation to attend a variety experiment show, which is being directed by a handsome rich man, Ma Dong Chan. In the following scene, despite her unwillingness, Mirren visits the show and participates in some dangerous experiments, just so she can get enough money for her family. She is made to fly in the air, pull a truck and risk her life in other experiments. As expected, Dong Chan is impressed by her boldness so he praises her performance. Later, he wins the most popular TV show award for his variety experiment and while receiving it, he introduces his girlfriend, Ha Young to everyone. She is a news reporter and it seems like she and Dong Chang have been together for a long time. After the massive success, Dong Chan now plans to take his variety show to another level. He wants to conduct a freezing cryonics experiment, in which a living human is frozen and put to cryosleep for 24 hours. However, the only catch is that he wants to extend the time limit and store the human body for a long time. Dong Chan believes that if they succeed, they can cure different diseases in the future. He also wishes to broadcast the whole experiment and is looking for a female participant. Following this, Dong Chan sends his assistant, Hyun Ki, to meet Mirren and persuade her to participate in the experiment alongside him. He also talks to his girlfriend and asks her permission to let him participate. Though she denies at first, Dong Chang does not stop requesting her until she finally agrees. Next, Hyun Ki meets Mirren at a restaurant and tells her about the whole experiment. He even promises her a lot of cash but Mirren walks away from there, saying the experiment is very dangerous. Afterward, Mirren goes to a fortune teller and asks her to reveal her future. The latter says that she will meet her boyfriend after 20 years and the climate around her will be very cold. On the other hand, Long Chan can be seen trying to persuade his boss to let him do the experiment and broadcast it to their channel. At first, his boss, Hong Suk, refuses his proposal but later when Dong Chan tells him that he can be popular in a short time because of the show, he immediately agrees. Later, Dong Chan approaches Mirren and personally requests her to accompany him in the cryogenic experiment. He also assures her that if she agrees, he will bring the autographs of his brother's favorite artists and pay her a huge amount. This finally convinces Mirren and she agrees to volunteer for the experiment. Later at night, the two are inside the freezing capsule and Dong's assistant Hyung Ki is filming the whole process. In the laboratory, we notice Professor Huang, keeping a close eye on the experiment. He is the one who invented the procedure, but he hasn't revealed how to reverse it. After a while, when the procedure is about to complete, Professor Huang enters the lab and urges Hyung Ki and the others to leave the place. Instead, he calls his student, Q, and asks him to look after the volunteers while he goes out to finish some important work. As soon as Huang leaves the laboratory in his car, we see a mysterious man following him. Later, Huang's car explodes and flips in the middle of the road. In the next scene, the time of the cryogenic experiment comes to an end but Guy Baum has no idea how to stop it. Panicked, he turns off the power of the whole laboratory, causing the capsules of all six volunteers including Dong Chan and Mirren to disappear. The following day, the police force and other representatives start searching for the missing people all over the town. Seeing this, the boss, Hong Suk calls Hyun Ki to his office and asks him to not tell anyone about the experiment. He also orders that all the evidence regarding it be destroyed immediately. Later, he also meets Dong Chan's girlfriend, Ha Young and tells her the same. She tries to revolt but when Hong Suk offers her the position of the main anchor on the 9 o'clock news, she agrees. Ha Young immediately gets to work and reports the breaking news where several people went missing. The news shocks many people across the country, including Nam Te, as he was very close to his sister. He starts remembering all the beautiful moments he spent with Mirren. On the other hand, after the news broadcast ends, 
Ha Young sits alone in the studio and reminisces about her first meeting with Dong Chang. She breaks down in tears and regrets taking up the offer. Right then, we are shown a secret room where Professor Huang is sleeping on a bed and it looks like he is still alive and someone is looking after him. Slowly, time passes by and both Mirren's and Dong Chan's family start getting on with their lives. But one day, Mirren's parents receive a letter from an anonymous sender, saying that their daughter is safe but they need to keep it a secret for their safety. However, they simply think someone is joking with them. Few months later, when their business fails, the family moves out of the city. Meanwhile, Mirren's friends have graduated and got new jobs, but they still miss her. The scene then fast forwards by 20 years to 2019, when Hong Suk has become the CEO of the media company and Hyung Ki is handling the Variety Experiments show. Nam Tae has also grown up and Dong Chan's former assistant, Ha Young is one of the lead anchors of the Newsline TV channel. Meanwhile, Yi Baum, who is attending an international conference, gets a notification on his iPad about a warning from the laboratory. Immediately, he turns on the cameras and notices that Professor Huang has regained consciousness and is out of his bed. Without wasting any time, he leaves the conference and heads straight to the laboratory. At the moment, Huang is trying his best to alter the experiment that he started 20 years ago. So, he opens the capsules of both Mirren and Dong Chan and injects them with something. As soon as he does so, Huang falls to the ground while Mirren and Dong Chan regain consciousness one by one. Both of them head out of the laboratory before Gi Baum arrives there. Mirren walks toward her house, whereas Dong Chan makes his way toward the studio where he used to work. Unfortunately, the latter's body cannot withstand the high temperature of the surroundings, so he passes out in the middle of the road. Later, Dong Chan is brought to a hospital and the doctors are surprised to see him in extremely normal condition, except for the fact that his body temperature is much lower than that of a normal human being. Soon, Dong Chan wakes up and asks the doctor to inform Hyun Ki about his presence. Having no idea about what he is saying, the doctor calls on the number Dong provided him and asks Hyun Ki if he knows someone by the name of Dong Chan. As soon as Hyun Ki hears the name, he gets shocked and rushes to the other room, away from his juniors. Meanwhile, Dong scolds him for not recording the entire experiment and leaving him alone in the laboratory. It turns out that he has no idea that he has woken up after 20 years. Somehow, Dong Chan's family also gets information about him being at the hospital. When they arrive there, and see him alive and well, they start fainting one after another. Meanwhile, Hyung Ki calls Hong Suk and informs him that Dong Chan is back and that their career is in danger. The revelation shocks the cunning CEO, so he quickly rushes to his office, without informing anyone. On the other hand, Mirren reaches her house and finds it all empty. This makes her assume that her parents have been chased away after being unable to pay the house rent. Hence, she goes to the police station and shows her identity. As expected, the officers are shocked to see her young face not matching the age on her ID card. After a while, Mirren borrows the telephone and makes a call to her mother. When he does not pick up, she is compelled to leave a voice message for her mother. In the next scene, Mirren's mother finally gets the voice message and rushes to the police station to get her daughter. Unfortunately, Mirren has already left and she is now at her university, startled by the modern gadgets that the students are using. Elsewhere, Hyung Ki and Hong Suk arrive at the hospital and as soon as they see Dong Chan, they start crying. However, our protagonist does not recognize them and starts wondering why everyone is looking so old. He then walks out of his hospital room and notices a board, revealing that the current year is 2019. Similarly, Mirren also walks around the university and finds the year to be 2019. We are then shown side-by-side -side scenes of both characters, who are left in utter disbelief after finding out that they have been asleep for 20 years. Next, Mirren's family finally finds her at the university and they engage in an emotional reunion. Mirren is then taken to her new lavish family house where her mother informs her that she founded a company with the funds Mirren gave her before she was frozen in the experiment, and with their business's earnings, they are now living a better life. Mirren has been away for a long time, but it turns out that her family has prepared a separate room for her, making her emotional. In the next scene, Dong Chan also returns home with his family. Despite being extremely rich before the cryogenic experiment, the family now operates a basic restaurant and lives in a much smaller house than before. Dong Chan discovers that his younger brother is now married and has a daughter. Not only that, he also learns that his father passed away years ago, making him upset. Elsewhere, 
Hyun Ki and Hong Suk are concerned that Dong Chan's return would jeopardize their careers by revealing information about the experiment that they have been hiding from others. The following day, Dong Chan returns to the laboratory to learn what actually happened to him and the other volunteers during the experiment. There, he meets Guy Baum and finds out that at the very end of the experiment, someone tried to murder Professor Huang 20 years ago. Although he survived, his team faked his death to protect him from any other impending risks. He regained consciousness a few days ago and resurrected Dong Chan and Mirren from their sleep. But soon after, he again passed out and now he is in intensive care. Hearing all this, Dong Chan deduces that the perpetrator attacking Professor Huang is connected to his cryonics experiment. Following this, Dong Chan invites Ha Young to meet him at a cafe. After she arrives, he is taken aback to see her old face, and apologizes for not being able to keep up with his promise. Despite this, Ha Young forgives him and mentions that she is happy to see him alive. Later, she starts crying and walks away from there, but not before telling Dong Chan that she will call him later. Meanwhile, Gi Baum keeps an eye on a dolphin that was previously part of the experiment and finds that it has died due to hypothermia. He then speculates that Dong Chan and Mirren will suffer the same fate if they continue staying in normal conditions. Gi Baum talks to one of his colleagues and mentions that the only person who can save them is Professor Huang but sadly, he is still unconscious at the hospital. Nonetheless, he immediately calls Dong Chan and tells him to maintain his body temperature not higher than 33 degrees Celsius. Next, an enraged Mirren arrives at the studio, confronts Dong Chan, and holds him accountable for her loss of 20 years. She is very upset to have lost such a huge chunk of her life, sleeping in a capsule. So, to compensate for this, she demands that the program director pay her an amount. However, Dong Chan informs her that he, too, is a victim of the experiment and is unable to help her. Following this, Mirren visits her previous university and declares that she wants to continue her studies. One day, her boyfriend from 20 years back, Byung Sim, who is now an instructor at the same university, notices her. Mirren, however, does not recognize him and walks past him. Meanwhile, Dong Chan comes to the studio and informs Hong Suk that he wants to resume his career as a program director. As expected, the cunning CEO stops him right away and tries to divert the topic because he is afraid that Dong Chan might expose their secret. Nonetheless, Hong Suk appoints him as a junior level director and allows him to join the studio. As soon as he gets appointed, Dong Chan scolds Hyung Ki for his lack of control over the employees. Later, he is approached by Ha Young, who tells him that she is free during the weekend and wants to meet him. Dong Chan, who couldn't even fap for 20 years, immediately accepts the proposal. Later at night, Mirren returns home and opens her brother's laptop to check her emails. To her surprise, she finds emails from her best friends from 20 years ago. It turns out that her mother lied to them, saying that Mirren moved to the US to continue her studies. The next day, Mirren sits to have dinner with her family and her parents suggest she not work hard to find a job. They assure her that the family's financial condition is not like before and that they can afford everything now. Later, Mirren attends her class at the university and coincidentally, the subject teacher is none other than Byung Sim. She does not recognize him but as soon as Byung Sim notices her in his class, he gets nervous and starts shivering. Meanwhile, Dong Chan joins the Variety Experiments group in the media company but gets ill-treated by an employee named Park on his first day. Park makes fun of his appearance and tells him that he is too good to learn directing and work for the program. Right then, Hyung Ki arrives there and notices the two arguing. He immediately pulls Park away, scolds him, and then apologizes to Dong Chan for his subordinate's behavior. Despite this, Dong Chan scolds Hyung Ki and belittles him for not being able to teach some manners to his juniors. Sometime later, the whole team sits for a meeting to discuss ideas for their upcoming show. When it's Dong Chan's turn, he presents some of his ideas but they are all primitive and uninteresting. As a result, he doesn't get any response from the others. Later, Hyun Ki receives a call from Mirren asking him to meet her and take care of her memorandum. Hearing this, Hyun Ki immediately heads to Hong Suk's office and reminds him of the same. On the other hand, Professor Huang regains consciousness yet again, but sadly, he has lost his memory. Gi Baum tries his best to help him back to normalcy. When none of his methods work, he takes the professor to the laboratory and makes him look at the freezing capsules he designed earlier. However, the old man simply keeps staring at the capsules. The following day, Mirren visits the studio and meets with Dong Chan, Hyun Ki, and Hong Suk. Wasting no time, 
she blames them for wasting 20 years of her youth and asks for compensation according to the rate she was paid for 24 hours of the experiment. Hyung Ki and Hong Suk calculate the amount and figure out that it is over 35 billion yen. So, the cunning CEO quickly refuses the compensation, saying that Mirren is still young and alive. In the next scene, Mirren's best friends are surprised to get a reply email from her, and immediately contact her. Soon, they meet at a restaurant and are shocked to see Mirren young and beautiful like in her youth. They touch her skin and ask her about its secret. As Mirren is forbidden to disclose the experiment, she tells her friends that she used some good cosmetic products in the US. On the other hand, Dong Chan goes on a date with Ha Young and compliments that she looks beautiful even after 20 years. While they are conversing, he opens his mobile phone and reads a recent article on him, questioning his disappearance and the possibility of him being engaged in the cryonics experiment. Mirren's friends also see the news and suspect that she is hiding something from them. Elsewhere, Dong Chan's mother gets enraged at the news and prepares to head to the broadcasting company's office to scold the director. However, as she is about to leave, her granddaughter stops her, saying that her uncle becoming famous can be a good thing for their family business. Afterward, Dong Chan visits the laboratory and meets Guy Baum. During their meeting, the latter shows him the cryonic capsules which still have some volunteers captured inside. Guy Baum also reveals that after the experiment, his normal body temperature is 31 degrees Celsius and the critical temperature is 33 degrees Celsius. Later, Dong Chan meets a detective who investigated Professor Huang's murder attempt and gets information about the prime suspect in the case. While explaining about his condition to the detective, Dong Chan learns that the general public have no idea about the experiment they conducted 20 years ago. The scene then shifts to Lee Sok Du, the CEO of a powerful company named the Unsung Group. He orders his subordinate to do a background check on Dong Chan and also investigate Professor Huang. If the latter is alive, he has to be killed immediately. Surprisingly, Li looks exactly like a man who is still trapped in one of the cryonics experiment capsules. In the final scene, Dong Chan returns to the office and confronts Hyung Ki for not trying to search for him and informing the authorities after he disappeared. In response, Hyung Ki tries to defend himself by stating that he was influenced by Hong Suk and that his hands were tied. Right then, Mirren also arrives there looking for Dong Chan and requests him to find a job for her at the same broadcasting station. The episode ends as Ha Young looks at the two with regret in his eyes. He has started to realize that he made a big mistake by not informing the authorities earlier.